Hi, Tarantulas with Shanti here today to talk to you about an earth tiger tarantula called the Framinga chylus species rufus, also known as the peach earth tiger or the Javan blonde. This tarantula is from Indonesia, Java, and I believe that it's found in the east side of the country. Now, I have a little bit of help with this research from a person named Alex Smith, who has a website on Facebook called Earth Tiger, and he is the breeder and supplier of rare and difficult to find Asian theraphosids. Now, he went on an extensive trip back in 2016, and he traveled the full length of Java he was looking for the Flamingo Chylus species Rufus, and he was with someone who had captured an adult female from the very place that he was taken to. So he knew that he was in the right habitat and he wanted to go home and be able to replicate the natural habitat as best as he could because he was interested in breeding them. Now, if you go to his site on Facebook, Earth Tiger dash Alex Smith is what you want to look for. If you look at his Facebook and you know follow the page, then you can see that he's traveled extensively looking for these Asian species, and it's phenomenal um, what he's seen and been able to do out in the field, and what a once in a lifetime experience. So I put together a video. Uh, some of it is some of the. Uh, landscape that he that Alex Smith saw when he was in the area where the Flamingo Chylus species Rufus was collected and he also had several posts where he wrote about his trip to Indonesia. I'm going to share those with you and I'm going to share also some footage of my own Flamingo Chylus species Rufus. Uh, this is a female that I have and she is from Fear Not Tarantulas. And I just think that she's absolutely gorgeous. If you watched uh, Tarantula Cat's uh, Girl Power video, you'll, you'll see that she was the female tarantula that I talked about, that I featured as my, my female tarantula. That is one of my favorites. Now, I will say something about her that uh, she is very defensive. She is a very defensive species. I have looked around to do research and in doing this, I've realized that I really need to join the BTS and start getting the, the British Tarantula Society and start getting their journal because I'm just not finding the depth of knowledge that I want. I do get some information off of arachno boards sometimes, you know, and some of this is opinion based and I find that helpful, but I really want to see more in-depth information and I could not even find the Flamingo Chylus species Rufus in the World Spider Catalog. So far what I'm seeing is five species of Flamingo Chylus. Now these were discovered by um, Reginald Pocock and that was back in 1895. Um, they took them I think to the uh, British Museum so uh, the Flamingo chylus genus has been around for quite a while. The species Rufus, on the other hand, not much information. Um, it is the subfamily Ornithoctoninae, and these uh, species have very dense uh, femoral uh, fringes on their their legs, and this is something that that Alex Smith mentions too. It's uh, kind of like a plumose sete. Uh, they, they have that tiger striped abdomen. So I hope you enjoy this and you learn about Flamingo Chylus species Rufus. Please feel free to ask me any questions. I'll try to dig around and find more information for you. Flamingo Chylus species Rufus, an introduction to the species. Special thanks to Alex Smith of Earth Tiger, Asian Theraphosid, breeder and supplier. This is Mr. Alex Smith, and this is during his trip to Java.
where he was taken into the wilderness to look for the Flamingo Chylus species Rufus, which he did not find, but he did find the location. So he was able to set up uh, a proper habitat when he got home. And this is what the habitat looks like. It's a dense, humid forest. I believe this is called Tropical Selva Forests. And here is a video clip from his site of a pairing of his large female and the little male who is doing a really good job there. Now I had said earlier when I was uh, doing the introduction that there had been species collected, but the species were not collected on the trip. This was just where a Firmingochylus species rufus female had been collected in the past. And um, <clears throat> Alex Smith was taken to that spot by someone familiar with the area who had collected a tarantula. And so he was able to see the habitat. And this is the setup that I have for mine. Um, they are Asian arboreals. You can keep them similar to the Lampropelma species. You want to have good ventilation. They do like moisture. You want to have substrate because they do like to dig under the substrate. You'll want to take a piece of cork bark and place it at an angle so that it simulates the trunk of a tree. They will go underneath here and that's where they will make their burrow. And they don't so much, you know, make a tubular structure like some, some species do. They like to make like a little pocket where they live and they web up. And so that would, would be very much like um, at the base of a tree trunk. So they're pretty defensive. Um, this is my female when I was rehousing her. And, you know, the whole time was pretty much like that. And it took a while to get her out of the catch cup. Um, and so, you know, these can get, you know, a good size, you know, I think uh, around up to six inches and they are medium to fast growers. Um, you want to keep your temperatures 70 to 85. Um, and, you know, this is a, a tarantula that you won't see a lot of. Uh, they do tend to come out at nighttime, so sometimes I sneak in and I see mine out during the night. And then when she goes into pre molt of course, she's hiding out. So I want to talk a, for a minute about um, <clears throat> Alex Smith, uh, May 30th, 2016. Uh, he did mention this unusual uh, femoral sete, and, and I want to read verbatim some of this, what he said on this post from May 30th, 2016. Note the very unusual brush-like femoral spinifor sete on leg one and two. It's an interesting and unique morphological feature that perhaps plays some role in mating. So that was something very interesting about this species. So this, this went on for a while um, <laughs> in my footage here, but it does give you a chance to get a good look at her. And then coming up here toward the end of this video, there's going to be a few shots that I just took. She is molted. She's been in this enclosure for about a month and she's molted. So you're going to see into her burrow, there's a little window in the back underneath the, the cork bark and you can see that, that she's molted and how brightly colored she is. And then you'll also see her spermathicae. And they have the uh, spermathicae with twin seminal receptacles. So they have those two little nubs. So that's what you'd be looking for if you're sexing a molt of this species. Very, very, <laughs> very beautiful and, and, and very crabby, but I'm, I'm sure that they vary from one individual to the next, but mine has, has always been um, on guard.
She does seem very happy in her new home. I modeled it after uh, the home that Alex Smith made for his, and you could see that in the, one of the, the pictures from the beginning when I was showing clips from his trip. I keep one corner of it um, wetted down a bit, and I do spray it once in a while. And this is an exoterra, so the top is a screen, so she has good ventilation there and some ventilation through the, the front. And in a moment here, we're going to get to those pictures. By the way, my female, her name is Boostville which is uh, Welsh for beautiful. So here she is. This is just uh, last night She's inside of her little burrow that simulates a tree trunk. Freshly molted, just looks gorgeous. And you know, she, you see how defensive she is, even just from the light shining in there, she was ready. She was ready to tell me off. And let's look at her spermaficae. And uh, yeah, this is what I have to share. Thank you for watching. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. Um, I know this is my first really informational presentation. I've been working really hard on it, but of course it's gonna need, my skills need some polishing. I'll get better with time. Uh, and maybe I'll stop saying um so much. But uh, I thought that it would be an injustice if I didn't share more about Alex Smith's uh, story and, and his travels for, for his search for Earth Tigers. I mean, what an epic adventure. It was a long um, vacation of six weeks, you know, but I'm sure it just must have gone by fast, you know, all of that intense, you know, traveling and searching for all of these different species and going through uh, all of these these countries so I'm gonna read um, something from his website um, on Facebook his earth tiger breeder and supplier website and this is from March 6th 2016 and here it goes so just over seven weeks ago I landed in Jakarta Java on an ambitious six-week adventure expedition traveling five Southeast and East Asian countries in six weeks covering Indonesia, Malaysian, Borneo, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. I will write an account for each country here, this being the first. So this first account is the only one that I'm going to read and it's about the, the hunt for the Flamingo Chylus species Rufus. My first country with Java, Indonesia, to travel 2,500 kilometers by land in under seven days. The target, to find Ornithoctonine G species Rufus, aka Formingo Chylus species Rufus. Two days before my arrival in Jakarta, a terrorist bomb blast rocked central Jakarta. Seven people were killed and when I arrived, the country was on a high state of security. Two days after the blast, I was at the bomb site where peanut and street food traders had congregated in defiance in an effort to demonstrate that life will go on as usual regardless of terrorism. After collecting the hire car and meeting up with my team, we embarked on a massive 2,500 kilometer round trip of Java over seven nights. We had established three different locations, one of which an adult female and sac was collected from. These arboreals are really difficult to find and each one occupies its own niche. So it's a case of working that out. As we got further into rural Java, the degraded and abused landscape gave way to relatively unspoiled and agricultural landscape. That was a real lift after seeing nothing for miles from the capital. The diversity and primary forests in the east offset the worst traffic pollution, grime, and non-functional sanitary system I've ever experienced. But this was to be an incredible adventure that was a real challenge to adapt to, to begin with. 
The absence of beer, working showers, hygiene, or Wi-Fi paved the way for a truly free-spirited adventure in all senses. After all, these things are just Western comforts that we can live without and soon adapt to. Not one single Westerner in my whole week, and traveling thousands of kilometers from Jakarta in the west to the far eastern reach of Java. People would stare, open mouth, at the pale-skinned foreigner, as I was called. But not one glimpse of malice or prejudice, just inquisitive minds and the way the Indonesians work together to always help one another or anyone else gets everyone through. Hospitality has been incredible. Beds, meals, breakfast, and washing facilities have been provided without hesitation from virtual strangers. Java had really begun to creep under my skin. There are many dangers in such a trip for a Westerner, and I would not recommend it without a guide or two. Hostage situations could be a threat, roads are pretty chaotic, but are okay, and I did a fair bit of the relief driving to rest our team driver. And then of course, there are the natural dangers, such as big cats, snakes, tree vipers, anything else that can get its teeth into you. Once we reached the species Rufus habitat that we were certain was the correct location, I left the other guys and went in 20 or 30 minutes deeper into dense rainforest at 2 a.m. I will upload a separate video. It was exciting, but also a little bit creepy. I managed to keep a bearing whilst in there, which is one of the biggest and easiest dangers to, to succumb to, that is getting lost in the jungle. After searching three locations over five days, we had to make a break back to Jakarta for me to catch my onward flight to Borneo. But sadly, <clears throat> with no sign of our quarry, it was a great adventure and the groundwork we put in will most definitely stand us in good stead for next time. And uh, I just really thought that that was worth sharing. And yeah, it's a... Uh, sounds like just an epic dream adventure uh, that of a lifetime so so yeah I, I also the the Firmingo Kyla species rufus that um, Mr. Smith has has been uh, has a two week old egg sac and that's right now so that is that's pretty exciting as well for him um, that was on January 20th 2018 so it was just a few days ago amazing I, I just I just had to share all of this and I hope that you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll be back for more until next time catch you later